Unit 3, Lesson 5, Part A, Elements of Painting. You know, in Part A, we have included the line, form and color. So first we are talking about line. Normally, you know, we say that a form which joins the two points is the line. You know, it's very easy to say that this is line. Sometimes an artist draws a line by a brush, brush a stroke. Now, this line, if, an, I mean, normally it looks like a line, but if we elaborate it or if we enlarge it 20 times, you know, this line looks like a form. It looks quite strongly with all width, etc. Because we believe that the line doesn't have a volume. It has got only a line. But no, I would say that line has got a volume also. The artists have been using line, line to express or to design intellectually, emotionally, intuitionally. They are using the line in different ways. And line is such an important element of painting. You know, in painting, nothing could be done without the line. With the line, you have the outer structure or the form, which could be said as the contour line, and the form comes out. I draw a human head like this. So those contours, you know, they are drawn by, by the line. And this line, you know, if I fill up the color there, it becomes a mass. It loses the character of the line. Similarly, I can spread my lines like this, like this, haphazardly, and show my emotion in a different way. So we have to know the lines. I mean, there are vertical lines, horizontal lines, diagonal lines. Suppose if I'm throwing some stone, so my posture will be diagonal. With the diagonal, you can show the force that a force is to be created through, the, through this line. Similarly, suppose if I am reclining on a ground, so the line has to be horizontal. And suppose I am very strongly standing just to face a strong problem, then I am just standing like a rock. So it is vertical. So the line, you know, it creates different kinds of expressions the horizontal lines, the diagonal lines, the vertical lines, and the swirling lines, which can create your emotions in many ways. So the line is to be understood very carefully and it is to be exercised in detail. See, normally, the line we call is the distance between two points, and if both the points are shown meeting together, it becomes a line. See here, I have put three points and I'm joining them and it has become a curved line. Similarly, I'm drawing this spot and after drawing this spot, I'm just going to fill it up. I have filled it up. Now after filling it up, see, This is a solid mass like this, and I have filled it up like this. So what happens, I mean, you don't see exact line here. Suppose if this line is not visible, only the outer form is visible by filling up. I, suppose I filled up with the color. Now what happens, this contour line, See, there is a contour line here, this line. So it works as a contour line. Now what happens in our work of art or in our given space, we create objects. There could be several objects. The one object, suppose two figures are standing here. Then there is a water pond here. Suppose, suppose there is a tree here. So we create these kind of imagery on it. Here what happens that contour line gives the definite form here but then at the same time 
to give a rhythm to these things or to add extra uh, expressions we use the drawings also and we throw our drawings for example i show you a visual from a painting how the artist uses lines despite of his contour lines see the figure drawn here by the eminent artist dharm narayan das gupta you can see the contour line here being used to fill out a form against the background now this is a contour line but here another artist sunil das he uses sweeping lines fast flowing lines see this line is coming here and there are some scratches scratches doodlings the brush is moving like this the sweeping lines are there these lines are being used for the expression and how the, an artist uses the intuitive line Now see this could be an example of mechanical lines everything i have drawn with the help of this i have drawn here this curve has been drawn by this this has been drawn by this so using instruments various instruments the artist can create the mechanical lines which are normally used by engineers and uh, draftsmen etc but such lines are open to the artist to to, to use if it is demanded by their artistry here also look the artist has used even the mechanical lines here the mechanical lines by using the ruler he has even drawn such big lines this is quite a big canvas of 4 feet by 3 feet um it shows here 170 cm into 152 cm means it's a big work and the artist is delineating or he is rendering the lines by instruments whereas at the same time he is using the lines here to create the movement everywhere in the background so how the lines could be mechanically used how the lines could be intuitionally used Now see I have drawn a cow or a bull just running very fast and the figure is diagonal and then I have created lots of doodling over it now just to show the force that how this bull with entire figure is crossing the the uh, facing the world so that could be also an expression by the artist so how artist uses intuitional lines here the artist uses decorative lines the lines help in decoration see the all foliages uh, foliages have been utilized i mean they have been delineated with the decorative lines 
Similarly, even in our miniature paintings, the artists have. Look at this painting. Here, uh, despite of the contour lines of the figures, the artist has used for the drapery, the very decorative works, even in the trees, everything is very decorative. You see, everything is bound with the design, with, with the, with the, with the uh, ornate designs everywhere. So this is how the artist uses line mechanically. The way I showed it in Sunil Das painting, the artist can use intuitive lines, which I have shown even in Sunil Das painting. Artists can use decorative lines, as I showed in these miniatures, and even in this painting, you can watch. Look at these palm leaves, which have been so decoratively used by Manoj Mitra. Artist creates his lines by pencil, pen, crayons, using uh, etching needles. Sometimes we use pestles. So there are varied mediums through which we create the lines. Sometimes lines are very wiry, thin, very fine, and sometimes they are coarse. Sometimes they have lots of textures, and sometimes you know the lines created looks like lines, but if we enlarge them. They look like the form, the thick form. For example, I'll show you here. Look, this line has been created by a brush giving a stroke. But if we enlarge the same line, then you see, look at this line. Same line has been enlarged to 10 times and the line takes such a form and you can imagine how thick it is. So here, the same line has changed its character. Instead of a thin line, it has become a voluminous line or it, it has become a foam. So that is all possible. That's why, you know, we call the, art, uh, the, the arts as plastic arts. So I hope you understand about the line. Next element is form. Form is the totality of a work of art. The total expression that we, we look at the work of art is the form. See, it's very, very simply, I mean, simply if we just take an example of an actor. See, we say that Amitabh Bachchan is in form and he is doing perfectly. Now what happens, you know, the actor like Amitabh Bachchan, when he performs on before the screen, his gestures, everything is very calculated and he doesn't move out of frame and he remains in the frame and able to express the character that he is playing. That expression becomes, you know, the form of that man. Similarly, you know, similarly what happens that a work of art when it goes to the completeness, it is, I mean, we, we, we can define it as a form, that this is the form of the artist. Now, form could be defined into different ways and could be expressed in different ways. You know, there are artists, for example, here is a painting, look. Now, some people can, can count this as a form and this as a space, the remaining area. It is possible. But even this is form, the total, where the things are spreading out from the frame and it is covering the entire surface area of the picture. So this is also a form. This is also a form. Look at this picture. You know, see, here this has been cut down and there is a picture behind. 
you can see i feel feel the depth here now the paint the, this surface has been painted you can call it negative form and this could be called as the positive form you understand and in positive form you can visualize this area as the positive form this area as the negative form similarly the artist explores his form but the form has to reach to the completion then only it is the form if there are smaller units for example you know sometimes we are mistaken and we should not miss be misguided with the shape as form see there is a woman taking bath there there is a pot in the hand she is throwing the water on it this is not a complete painting i mean i don't say that this this form is completed but here this figure you know is an individual unit of the figure this bed sheet is the individual unit of the paint of the form but this and this cannot be independent form these are separate units so form means the totality of a picture how the artist has created uh, the different shapes how he has united the shapes how he has placed it in into the space and how the textures have been utilized how how the colors have been juxtaposed and the totality of a picture is a form see when we talk of form in a given space if we have drawn any form, any any shape that works as a form provided it has got a complete relationship with the space you know here in this visual you see the artist has created this form this is a sculpture by famous artist satish gujral now in a sculpture you know space is open and space is not restricted here by anything the space is clear cut so you can very clearly define that here is this this is the form of the sculpture because every activity is happening inside this contour line so this is a form of a sculpture but when we jump to a painting in painting our all four sides of the canvas or the given a space that starts attacking the shape whatever we have drawn had it been a painting instead of a sculpture then you see these areas would have been very negative space there is nothing wrong in having a negative space but if negative space is enlarged little bit here and here and here suppose i have enlarged the negative space whereas the sculpture remains at the same place then you see that space will come will will demand something else here that happens in painting that you have to take care of all four sides how the forces are working against it suppose this curve is there then this corner demands something here and there has to be something here if had it been a painting this is a sculpture with a space but i am talking in relation to a painting we jump to a painting by the same artist satish gujral here here the artist has created this shape which is working as a form here but unlike a sculpture where the space is highly defined like a cut out here the artist use activizes the entire space by various textures so this is how the artist you know creates his own space and the basic basic shape through which he is wanting to say something is taken up in relation in relationship to the space so a space becomes most important for an artist to create a form a positive form is here this is a negative form here but the negative form means the space also the same thing could be repeated here look at these two sculptures in a, in an open space now here the space if a space is moving little bit 
then you, this space demands something. Similarly, if you jump to this painting, look at this painting where the artist has bound his form in this area. Now this is his main, this has become his main form, but this, the, the, the left out space has been given lots of textures and here even he has changed the tone here so that it does not look like a cutout. So people should not misunderstand that the form is a kind of cutout and it is against the space. No, the form is the part of the space and there is a strong relationship of the form and space. And that's how we say it, a good form or a bad form. See, the artists are of different minds. Some, some, some of the artists are introverts and some of the artists are extrovert. And it, this tendency works even in painting. If you are in, in, an introvert, then your form starts coming to the center or to the, uh, to the point from where the radials start. Look at the painting of the famous artist G.R. Santosh, an eminent painter from Kashmir, lived in Delhi for a long, for, for his lifetime. Now Santosh uses the tantric imagery of Indian traditional art in a modern way. And here, everything is radiating from here. See, it opens up, it opens up, it opens up, it opens up. So, but his painting is not going out of the frame. See, everything is constrained to the center. Either it is radiating and coming back to the center. It is radiating and coming back to the center. Here, Birende, another painter, the senior painter, he also painted something like that, that everything is whirling into the center, 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 because he, he also belonged to the tradition of uh, tantric paintings. Here also Birende paints the, the similar kind, with the similar tendency. And there are painters who are extrovert. In the painters who are extroverts, their forms are spreading out of frame. It has no limit. Like mural, their works are going out of the frame. That is the form which goes out of the frame not the figures or the shapes that artists have created. Now, here is an example of extrovert form. The artist Arup Das paints here the story of Mahabharata. You can see Gandhari here, Dhritarashtra at the back, and Draupadi's Chidharan has been painted here and Pandavas have been painted here. Now, the story is dynamic, pathetic, so the artist has created, uh, has left very little space where no imagery has been done. Just look here, this much space he has left, only this much. Otherwise, he creates the crowd everywhere so that lots of happening is is around. Whatever, you know, uh, he, the depth he creates through saluting the figures with little bit darkness here. So this is the form which is going out of the frame here, 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 and with the sticks, you know, with, he has created this space. So how the artist uses the extrovert form, where it, it seems as if the entire picture is going out of the frame. Another interesting example is here by K.G. Subramaniam. K.G. Subramaniam's work is divided in compartments in major. He has a tendency to narrate the stories through the compartments where from the figures, human figures, animals and other imagery are protruding out. Now here, see, it is he has done lots of stories here, Durga is there and some animals are there, the tiger is there and there, there, are, there is a man and women behavior is there and 
ladies are there, the, the animals, monkeys and everything, and the, and the sunflower is there. Lots of things are there. But see, everything is not coming out, but it looks as if the story will continue even after this frame. As, as the story will continue after this frame, everywhere. So these are the kind of extrovert forms. Color. The next element is color. See, color is not an entity. How, how do we see color? You know, color is visible only because of light. If in this room, I just dark it, I, I put off all the lights and nothing is visible. And then you may put all bright colors, red, yellow, blues, nothing will be, nothing will be visible. How do we see the color? It is the sun rays, sunlight, when the light falls on the particular surface or area where the color, uh, pigment is applied, that particular pigment has got a quality to absorb the a few rays of the light and it reflects a few wavelengths or the rays. And that's how we see that particular color. It's a scientific term, way of saying, but as artists, you know, the color is very important phenomena for us. How do we deal with it? Now, see, we talk of kinds of colors. You know, we have talked of the properties of color, but we have to understand the physics of color. You know, mainly, there are, there are three uh, primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. We all understand. Mind it, red, blue, and yellow. These three are primary colors. With these three primary colors, you know, red, blue, and yellow. If you mix yellow with the red, the color we achieve is orange. Similarly, with the yellow and blue, we achieve the green. And with the blue and red, we achieve the purple. Now, these three colors, which we have now up achieved out of mixing the two on each side, you know, they, this is known as secondary color. And after secondary color, you can achieve the tertiary colors between the two. For example, the orange and the red. If you mix the tone in between will be orangish red. That will be tertiary color. So similarly, after tertiary color, we can have quaternary color also. You know, so primary color, secondary color, tertiary color, and quaternary color. So you can, by mixing the two and in between the ranges, you can increase your uh, palette. So how we grow with the palette that it is not limited to the primary colors only. Now see, these are the basic primary colors. Yellow, blue, and red. And these three colors, if are mixed with each other, then they create another color. For example, if we mix yellow with the red, it will become orange. If we mix blue with the red, it will become purple here. And if we mix yellow with the blue, it becomes green here. Okay? See, I have blended blue and yellow and it has become green. Here I have mixed red with yellow and it has become orange. And while mixing red with blue, it has become violet or purple. So this is how we achieve a secondary tone. Now see, if similarly I can show you on a color wheel where we can just see that how you, are, you can achieve the tertiary color. Now see, yellow, blue, red. Yellow and blue mixed and then we have reached, achieved green. Yellow and red, we have achieved orange. See, orange. And similarly, we have achieved with the red and 
uh, uh, red, red and blue, the violet. So violet, orange, and green. These three colors become secondary colors. But when we mix, see, when the green color which we have achieved, if we mix it with the yellow, then we achieve a yellow green. See, this yellow is mixing with the green. And this tone, this tone is the tertiary color, this tone is the quaternary color. Here, this tone is the quaternary color, this tone is the tertiary color, because this is, this is not pure orange. The orange has been mixed with more, more yellow, so this tone is different. Similarly here, see, this is violet, but violet is mixed with the blue violet. So it's getting more violet here, and it is, it is more blue here. And this is the fast blue. So you can imagine how an artist, by mixing the tones, pure, uh, the primary colors, he can achieve secondary tones, tertiary tones, and quaternary tones. Similarly, I mean, the way I have talked about the range of colors, similarly, we can have analogous colors. The analogous colors are, I mean, it's just a kind of saturation kind of thing. See, I use black. With the black, I mix little white, little white, little white, little white, little white, and there comes a range. So it's right from the highest saturated pigment to the light, light, lightest. And then what happens here, the, the value is added and there the value is decreased. So that kind of tone is known as the analogous colors. This is an analogous tone of color, analogous. See, analogous color means I have used red on one side and yellow on one side. Now I'm mixing in red, little white, more white, more white, more white, more white, more white, rich. Now, in this tone, I've used yellow and little white. And then I'm using yellow, more yellow, more yellow, and more yellow. So how the analogous, this range of analogous colors spreads here with between the two basic colors. While painting, you know, many artists choose to use this color against this color or this color against this color. That is a personal choice. That is altogether a different thing. But one has to know what, how the colors are softened and how, how the tones between these colors are created. The application of the color is so important to a painter and before applying the color to the surface, he should be able to understand that there are a few qualities of color. What are these qualities? The scholars have divided it into three parts, hue, value, value and intensity. Now what is hue? See, hue is, I mean, you, you say red color. But red, you know, it spreads from crimson to burnt sina. So crimson, then you can go to rose madar, you can go to vermilion, you can go to scarlet, and you can go to burnt sina, Indian red. Such a range is there. But all these colors which comes in the red are, will be known as red hue. Similarly, you can have yellow hue, you can have blue hue. Understand? Now, See, there could be, you know, th th this is about the hue, that how hue could be enriched with different tones. I, I believe you have understood. Now, see, similarly, after hue, we talk of intensity. The intensity means Intensity or chroma, that is the saturation of the color. See, in color, as I said earlier, that color is, is visible because of light. So instead of color, if we say pigment, the material, the substance through which, which we mix with water or with the oil or with the, uh, with the wax, and it becomes our medium to paint. Now, this pigment, 
if it is highly saturated see i have picked up the pigment the red pigment very thick in my brush then it will be very strong there but if i mix the water or linseed oil or turpentine or something the solvent then it spreads out and it it, it weakens it it goes light now you see if it is much saturated then if you have more of pigment there then the saturation is higher and if less of uh, pigment is there the saturation saturation is lesser so that is the intensity or chroma understand see in saturation you can see here the violet color and you can see the green color here now there there are tones between the between the green and the purple the rose madar color uh, or or you can see the nearly violet color and tone is getting darker 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 it's reaching entirely darkness is there so how the saturation here the artist has used more of pigment here the artist has more of use more, he uses more of pigment if he reduces the pigment then it becomes very light and saturation is reduced so how the colors have, gets more saturated in the, with, with the intensity of the pigment now we will be talking of value you know you have understood what hue is hue means that particular range of that color we say that this is red blue yellow but in the value what happens if you add more of water or i mean more of solvent you know it loses its quality then if you increase i mean if you add more white to it the light is more added and there the value is added and if you add darker part black to it then it 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 it, it loses its hue so the value is increased with the light and decreased with the with the darkness that is the value see how the value has been strengthened and reduced value is related to light and when you create more light the value is enhanced when you create more darkness the value is reduced so you can enrich the value of the color by mixing white or or reduce by mixing black in it all these kinds of preparation of colors you know they it adds to our expression when we are doing a painting when we are composing the various elements into a space the work of art enriches as much as knowledge we have got about colors